there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm here with a book review. Uh, the book that I'm going to be reviewing is uh, something that I read in uh, late September, early October, uh, Libra season. Uh, for those of you that uh, like to uh, follow uh, the uh, astrological uh, signs of the zodiac. And I read this as a buddy read with Janelle from The Page Turner. Uh, I'm going to leave a link down below to Janelle's video because she did an outstanding job with her review. So hopefully I can give you uh, my side of the story and uh, make it uh, and try to uh, do as good a job. Uh, but the uh, book that we buddy read is uh, Independent People by Haldor Laxness. And uh, Independent People is Laxness's very first novel. Uh, Laxness is uh, from Iceland. He is perhaps their, not just their greatest writer, but also their greatest celebrity, which it is quite something to have a figure like him uh, serving as... Uh, the uh, their uh, premier figure uh, in American culture. Uh, your top celebrities are movie stars and even more recently reality stars. But Laxness is Iceland's only Nobel Prize winning writer. He won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1955. He wrote other novels uh, such as Under the Glacier and he lived quite a long life. Uh, he was born in 1902 and he died in 1998. So he lived a pretty long, healthy life. Uh, but with regard to independent people, it follows a sheep farmer by the name of uh, Jalter of Summerhouses. Uh, Jalter starts out working for somebody else before he finally works his way toward uh, becoming the uh, person in charge of their own uh, farm and sheep herd. Uh, his greatest desire is to be able to maintain the independence that he's earned and as much individual freedom as possible. But like with any work, he's bound to come across he's bound to come across a great deal of conflict, and that comes in the form of conflicting interests, the contradictories of life. At first, he meets a woman named Rosa. The two of them get married, but Jalter is pretty. Uh, set with his ways, he is, I want to say, he, he doesn't believe in any form of gods. He is completely against the idea of superstition, and he doesn't like poetry or prayers unless they run. Rosa, on the other hand, wholeheartedly believes in superstition, and she believes in the many of or she believes in the gods and their power that they have on uh, Icelandic society. And Rosa goes out with the bailiff's son and they conceive a child which ends up being a daughter. She gives birth to the daughter. Daughter barely survives. Rosa does not. That's really setting up the stage for what's to come. It's not necessarily a spoiler. But we move forward 13 years, which I feel, I wish that we got a little bit more of Asta Silija growing up. I would have liked to see her years between infancy and 13 years, because that's how uh, rapid they move forward. By this time... Uh, Jalters with a new uh, wife named Finna and three more sons. Helgi, Vender, and Noni. 
please correct me if I am wrong, which I probably am, but uh, otherwise I feel that it seems as if during the uh, novel, uh, Jalter's trying to maintain his independence while also trying to, uh, he's also trying to, uh, uh, lay his authority down on his children who eventually grow up and they want to, uh, obtain the freedom away from their dad, which it's that whole contradictory of what it is like uh, to be independent and to possess freedom, uh, which in a way he has to be proud, but Jalter's a very complicated individual. He's a very distant individual. And in my mind, I found him very difficult to sympathize with, despite the fact that I very much stand uh, by him when it comes to the idea that uh, we uh, should work toward uh, individualism and that idea that you are not dependent on many, if any, uh, people or groups. I felt that this was a very dense work, and I felt that it was a great challenge to get into. Uh, Janelle and I definitely agreed on the fact that uh, if you're going to approach this novel, you really need to take your time with it. This is not something that you can zip through and get something out of. You have to really look at the text, sometimes even look over the text, and really uh, immerse yourself, uh, because it is very earthy in my mind. Uh, Janelle compared it to a rich cheesecake. I'm comparing it to a gorgonzola or Maytag blue cheese because in that way it's very if you take a bite into it it really it can really turn you off but if you nibble it and immerse yourself in it you can really uh, get something out of its message and what it's trying to say I feel that the uh, Laxmus' greatest strength with independent people is his ability to develop a setting and develop that feeling of being in uh, Iceland in the early 20th century. It uh, doesn't give a time necessarily, but at some point uh, we can tell that uh, it makes its way into World War I, because at that point there's a great transition uh, from farming to tourism. But during World War I, it's interesting that Iceland, because people were depending on them to provide resources, it was a time where they were able to blossom. And between the struggles uh, that uh, Britain, France, Russia, Germany, Italy, and eventually the United States uh, would go through during that scuffle, uh, Iceland uh, was able. Iceland was able to build up and provide uh, resources as necessary, despite the fact that they were losing people because they were looking to obtain the American dream. And I always find it interesting when foreign writers talk about America and their point of view, uh, and talk about their point of view toward the country. Yeah. Which, me being an American, 
I'm aware of uh, I I'm aware of the American point of view and uh, what I get out of uh, being a citizen. But I also I felt that the character development was okay. I think that it could have been a little bit. I wish I could have felt a greater connection to Jalter. And I wish that there was uh, some, but I wish that there, I wish I felt a bit more of an attachment. But I still felt that the uh, characters and the fact that they were all flawed in their own way, but at the same time possessed individual strengths, it was, an, it was a humanistic element that I feel that novels greatly benefit from, especially when they're following the life and times of a particular group of people, and they may have contrasting uh, interests. I gave this three and a half out of five on my Goodreads. I think that it is a novel that is worth picking up and worth reading, especially if you want to learn more about Iceland from about 100 years back. But that comes with the warning that you need to be patient with independent people and you need to take your time and immerse yourself in it. I may even pick it up and reread it again. But I think that uh, Halder of Laxness is somebody that I want to check out more and I feel that he's somebody I'm looking to explore. I know that Under the Glacier was something that uh, Janelle and I considered, but I may pick that up uh, in the future, and I may pick this up again, and, or one of his other novels that he has written. Thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you check out Janelle's review as well. Uh, it'll be uh, interesting for you to uh, get both of our uh, points of view. Janelle liked it better than I did, but I think both of us can agree that if you have the patience, it's worth checking this out. And for now, keep reading.